Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. Nerling seems to be one of those machining black arts that takes a bit of trial and error. I've been using this cheap little guy I picked up ages ago, but she's pretty wobbly and I think we can do better. If that sounds like something you're into, hang around to see how this one turns out. This one has a lot of parts and they're not going to make themselves, so let's get to it. I'll kick this one off with the main body. Now I don't want to spend all day sitting here talking about squaring up stock, but I do have this new face mill, which is a little excessive for my machine, but it does make for some great shots. I'm nowhere close to using it to its full potential, and to be honest, I found that if I push it at all too hard, things start getting pretty out of whack pretty fast. But even being a fraidy cow like me, it moves a lot of steel. With the four sides all sorted, I'll flip over to an end mill and get the sides squared up. I love the chips that come off this thing, they just look so fluffy. With the pieces set up in the vise together, I'll spot drill for the through pins that are going to hold the arms together. Then I can ream the two outside holes to 10mm to match a pair of standoffs we'll make a little later on. Now back to the centre for a couple of holes that will be the home for some countersunk bolts to hold the main body together. I'll start with a drill for an M8 tap and then it's time for these countersinks. Now I borrowed this tool and it's probably suited to machines with a little more rigidity than I'm working with here. It starts off okay, but I guess I'm dealing with too many different speeds over the length of the cutting face, and it's going to sing the song of its people. But we made it, and I didn't break this thing, so I'll pop on a smaller chamfer on the outer holes. We do have a few chatter marks, but the bolt should cover that up. And that's all that I'm willing to tackle with these together for now. So I'll pop them apart and drill the base of the countersinks to clear the shaft of the bolt and it's back over to the other piece. These will be the holes that will hold the little bar onto the outside of the knurling tool to allow it to be held in a quick change tool holder. I put a lot of effort into this project on just generally trying to be better, but Musical Parallels was a game that I had to play a lot on this one. I know that the vise would probably hold these parts, but just for the downward drilling motion I like the extra support, and this vise does give me a fair whack of jaw lift when I've got parts up on top. But I managed to miss the parallel with the drill bit, so now I can just bump a little chamfer onto these holes on the back plate, get the holes for the mounting bar tapped, and the center holes with the countersinks while it's held tight, and this one can go to the side for the minute. That was a lot of drilling, but now it's time to hog off the excess steel I have here. I've got the two parts kind of book matched against each other, and I'm going to whittle the material away from the outside edges until I have a good solid core to bolt these two halves together, but have enough clearance for the arms. I want to be left with a web of about 16mm between the two parts, so I'm shooting to remove about 8mm per side. A quick look to make sure I'm not doing anything weird, and I'll hog off enough to get me close, with enough room for a cleanup pass. I 
And that's what it looks like when you run the table into your camera tripod. And back to the carbide to clean this all up. It's kind of hard to tell from this shot, but damn I'm close to the jaws on the vise. Like I measured it and everything, but it's probably as close as I've gotten without a little accident. And that actually went better than I thought it would. Just a little housekeeping, and these can go to the side for the moment. Now onto the arms. I'll rock the face mill again to get these squarish, and we can have a little look at what on earth is going on here. On the right, I've got the material that will make up the arms, but I have to drill and ream a hole that will go through the edge of the material. And I'm no expert, but from what I can tell, twist drills and reamers don't like cutting interrupted holes. I could do this with an end mill, but I want the hole to be pretty bang on for a pivot pin that I want to fit nice and snug. So there is another bar of material to the left that will give me some sacrificial material to drill into. And again, my parallels are going to give me a little grief. But if I'm careful, I think I should be able to drill a hole, crack the vise, and move them between the holes. And that was a lot. Let's see if this works. I'll square up the end to give me a good start reference, then spot drill for the pin that will hold the wheel, then my dicky side hole for the main nut and pivot, and then the third hole that will make room for the pins that the arms will pivot on. Then I'll drill and rim the hole for the roller wheel and play musical parallels to get the off center hole drilled. Then off to the other end to finish the mounting hole and give it a ream. Now I did have to do a mad dash to Bunnings, and they got me. 45 bucks for a 15mm drill bit. But I didn't have anything close to the right size, so you win this round, Bunnings. And I'll pop an end mill in this hole because it makes me feel better. I'm not sure if this is helping, but I really don't want these to move. So with a trusty G clamp on the job, I'll get it drilled and reamed. It actually worked. But even though I thought I was clever, one of the parallels did get a little kiss from the drill on the way through. But this end is a little long, so I'll whiz off some excess with a roughing mill, but I'm not going all the way to size just yet. I want to be able to grind these into the body later on to be just right. Now to hog off a little material to give us clearance around the central web and switch over to the ball nose end mill to make it a little swoopy. And these are almost there. A quick trip to the grinder to give these a little shape and... And there we go. They should work nicely. And just when you thought we were all done with sketchy setups.
I'm not sure it's simply because I haven't done a huge amount of milling or that I'm just trying to make this easy, but for some reason I did try my best to do everything I could in one setup. But um, it worked pretty well, but I did start to notice that it had me on the wrong angle for the slot that the wheels would live. I need them to be favouring the inside of the arms, not the outsides. So I'll admit defeat and get to doing these one at a time at a better angle and clean everything up. And that fits really nice. So these can get flipped over and I'll burrow out a hole for the lead screw and a little pocket to retain the spring. I messed up a little here when filming. I milled the first one all the way through with the small mill and it took ages. But on the second one that you can see here, I cleared away the bulk of the material with a larger mill and drilled the hole to remove a bit more excess and then took on the slot. And that was, uh, that was a lot faster and nowhere near as hard. But we are learning. But that's enough for the mill for now. So let's knock out these smaller parts. I picked up some bronze scrap recently and it seems that I got really lucky. The ends of some of these small pins are a light press fit for the holes I just reamed in the arms, so I'll take that as a win. But I'll face off, drill and ream the centers to clear the standoffs we'll be making next, then get them parted to length and they can go to their permanent home. I'll call that a win. Not too tight, not too loose, just some kind of Goldilocks point in the middle. And now for the steel standoffs. I've got a little bit of cold rolled bar that I'll whittle down to it's a sliding fit in the 10mm bronze bushing we made. Then turn down the end to fit the 8mm reamed hole in the body. Then all I need to do is part it off, flip it in the chuck and repeat on the other end to match. Then a little buff with some scotch bright, and these can go to the side. Now for the pivots, main nut, I don't know what to call them but I know I want to take some more bronze down for a slide fit on the 16mm centre hole in the arm and get these two parted off to be exactly the same width as the arms. It probably would have made more sense to do this in a collet block, but I just couldn't resist putting another pair of parallels in danger. I'll spot drill and pop a pilot hole through that's just smaller than the gap between the parallels, hoping that blasting out the excess will mean I don't put as much downwards pressure on this setup. Then get it drilled for a clearance fit on an M8 thread. And 
and we didn't even mess that up. So off to the other side, and this one can get the same treatment. But rather than a clearance hole, this one will get tapped for M8 and be our main nut. And there's not many parts to go now. For the pins that will make up the rollers, I'll simply turn down a little more cold rolled with a reduced section the same width as the arms. Let's, uh, let's try that with the collar tightened up. I'm shooting for a slide fit on the 6mm reamed holes in the front of the arms we drilled earlier. Then drill and tap for a little M4 screw. Bump in a little chamfer and part this one to length. Then clean up the face, give it a matching chamfer and clean it up with some scotch bright. I'll repeat another one off camera, and this one can go to the side. Now for the lead screw. I'll get this one faced and center drilled for some tail support. Then I'll make sure I've got enough stick out, and then bring the live center in and whittle down to an M8 major diameter. I probably should have single point cut this thread, but little threads still scare me. So out comes the trusty tailstock die holder to muscle through. I did make the OD a bit on the large side to form the best thread that I can with a die, and it was a hefty workout on the old guns. I think I'll have to look into making one of those floating styles that does the work for you. But making that bar the maximum OD that my dies can cut does give me a pretty nice fitting thread, so there is that. Winging aside, I'll get almost all the centre drill parted off, because you know, bad math and everything. Give it a chamfer, and it can go to the side as well. I just need one more part to be able to give this a test. For the clamping bar, I'll mill down a little stock to fit in the tool holder. Zero it in and drill a couple of clearance holes for a couple of M6 bolts to match the mounting hole screws in the body we made at the start. I did mention that I'm trying to be better, but uh, the clearance hole for the bolts that I have might have snuck through the side a little. It's on the back, and I'm committed now, so that can be our little secret. With all the parts made, I can check how close everything is and round off all the corners on the belt grinder. None of these are critical, they're all just aesthetic. So I just want to grind them all in to look nice-ish, and mostly match. Then after more time sanding, deburring, and finishing than I would care to admit to everyone, let's get to putting together the parts that we have. 
This project was a lot for me to get done on my schedule, so forgive me for being a little clumsy here. It had been a long week. Starting with the backplate, I'll pop in the two standoffs. Then the knurling wheels can get screwed into the ends of the arms and locked down. On the top arm where the handle will poke through, I didn't have quite enough room for the pivot to do its thing, because again, math. But I just bumped in a little more space for everything to move freely in there. Then the arms go onto the body, and the bronze pivot and nut can go into the holes. Now I've had this thing together and apart off camera at least 10 times. Checking fits, making sure nothing catches, but apparently that's not enough times to put this on camera without fumbling my way through. I promise all this fits together nicely. It's me that's making this look hard. On goes the top plate, and in go the countersunk bolts. Damn it, they're still too long. I'll trim those a little more later, I just really need to see this thing work. Then on goes the wobbly mounting bar that doesn't sit flush just yet, but it should get me through this next bit. Now it seems customary on YouTube that if you make an knurling tool, you need to use it to make its own handle. Wait a minute, this feels funny. The screw is the wrong way. I told you I was a klutz. But let's get back to the lathe and get this finished off. I'll get a little more stock chucked up, faced and turned down to the overall width of the knurling tool. Then reduce another area down to be ever so slightly smaller than the width of the arm so we don't have any clearance issues. Then a swoopy radius with a button insert. And it can be drilled and tapped. Normally making a tool like this, I would test it out, get to know it a little, and then use it. But apparently, today that is not what we're doing. So here it is, the maiden voyage. And it's not bad. It could be a pinch deeper, but I guess that's just getting to know the tool a little. And these are also brand new knurling wheels to me so they might be a little different to what I've used previously. Let's get this thing finished. I'll get the knob parted off and clean up the other side before hopping over to the mill. For the scallops, I'm doing them the easiest way I know how. In a six-sided collet block, I'll just bring a ball nose end mill down to a depth that looks good, cut, flip the block to the next face, cut, and keep going till there's six little scallops. Alright, last part. I'll pop the lead screw back into the chuck and part off the excess. Then make a little area for the matching M8 thread that's tapped into the handle and struggle my way through. Then I can get a smear of thread locker and using the collar to hold everything in place, lock it up nice and tight. And we're done. This project was a big one for me. 
There was a lot of parts to make in the time frame that I allowed, and the fitting and finishing was a task in itself. It's not perfect by any means, but it does work pretty nice, and it just feels like a good quality tool. And let's see how it does on some straight nails. Nice. One thing I probably will change after this is I think that I will slot these little pins to accept a screwdriver. I really like the look of them all nice and clean, but it is hard work getting the screws in and out of the rollers nice and tight without making a big fuss. Thanks for hanging with me through this one. If you like the video, please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel. See you on the next one!